we should invest more in our workers, especially our knowledge workers. In our studies on innovation, we see that only 5% of Dutch firms is really investing in knowledge and their knowledge workers. It turns out that emotions and knowledge are deeply intertwined. You really can't separate them. When people are happy, it inspires their knowledge acquisition. It allows the knowledge to be retained better and it gives people a sense they want to share what they know. If they're unhappy, they sort of close ranks in themselves. You know, I'm just going to take care of myself. I don't care about other people. That stuff has very strong implications and ramifications, though it's hard to measure. And in the U.S. at least, or probably in most of the world, this is viewed as soft stuff. It's not important. It's sort of almost girly or sort of feminine. It turns out it's more important than anything else. Also, it's a nice word is uh, what is called uh, empowerment, but I, I think that's more or less is, is a buzzword. Um, what we uh, what we do with our people and and um, we use uh, methodologies like uh, Covi and and, um, uh, and some others is that we uh, invest a lot on the level of team leader in in our company. For me, um, you know, everybody focuses on knowledge management as, as ideas residing in the head of a person. Uh, I'm always interested in how people extend their knowledge through their networks and whether they complement their abilities or not, or whether full organizations can get to the right expertise at the right point. Uh, and so that's a big deal for me at an individual level. And so for us, what that's doing, if you can imagine for me uh, for a minute here, a two by two, in most organizations you have people that are very effective on the talent basis. They get strong ratings in their annual performance schemes. And then you also have a lot of people that are very effective in the networks. They make their colleagues more effective through how they help them in sales, how they share ideas. Uh, what that's helping us to see are where are those hidden stars, the people that are not necessarily recognized on the talent basis that we've established but are really critical to making others effective in the organization. And if we lost, would have a big impact. Uh, as well as where are what I call the, the black holes, you know, the people that are individually good but not enabling others to be effective. Uh, what we've learned when we look at, if we, if we define a good networker not as somebody that knows a lot of people, but somebody that is in the top 20% performance category over their career, is that there's actually a statistically significant negative likelihood of being in that top performer category and just knowing a lot of people. It's not um, so much tied in those behaviors that you see if you look at people that have big networks. It's much more um, tied in bridging ties, so having ties across functional lines, hierarchical levels, you know, and using your network in a way that extends your abilities. And it's much more in a set of behaviors that, that um, are not surface, you know, it's not just going out and meeting a lot of people, it's giving something first before you're in need. It's um, making your own expertise transparent, a set of uh, dimensions like that that uh, seems to resonate with people better than, you know, the, the surface level activities. I think we can all point to people within our companies who are tremendous collaborators. They can be trusted to honor their commitments. Uh, they are uh, willing to take time out of their days to help other people succeed at their tasks. Uh, and, and those are the, the kind of um, archetypes that I think we're all shooting for as, as, as being the, the employee of the future. The self-conscious professional uh, and, and who's going for all kinds of coalitions in, in, in work instead of being an employee in an organization. Knowing people, eh, knowing people you can address, knowing people you can ask to be part in this project, uh, that will be the important thing for the future. If you look at trends today, there's a perception everything is moving faster. Everything is getting connected. Uh, I think the paradox is the one thing which is slowing down is the building of trust. I think you really have to, one, really believe in reci general reciprocity. You have to give and hope that others give back. You have to be trustworthy and trust is a huge function. You know, we now see all sorts of studies, economic studies, on the value of trust. If people trust each other, it lowers the knowledge transaction costs. I trust you, you don't have to, I don't have to sign a contract with you, I don't have to worry whether you're going to use this interview and sell it and not give me any royalties. So we don't have to get lawyers involved or accountants involved if you trust people. And there are countries that are high trust and that it really it shows in their economic production and companies too. And then you could see the opposite. Look at a country like Russia, which has very high human capital, people are well educated, no trust. You could see why, you could understand the reasons for it, but it certainly doesn't have a great outlook because there's low trust. We come out of a period, it was more or less in fashion to say that you, you took your 80 hours or 90 hours a week for work and then they ask me how many hours do you work and I always say I don't work. I never work. We're talking about 
uh, and never work. And what I see more and more people around me, uh, entrepreneurs or scientists or uh, call the consultants, in fact, they are not working. What they try to do is living. Uh, and that's part of my life. And they, but they, uh, the division between work and life is the thing, thing that uh, we have to get rid of. That will be the challenge of the future for every individual. How do we incorporate it in just living, just being, just being a human being and not an, uh, an, uh, just a, a piece of a bigger system which is controlled by somebody else? You have to, uh, I think that the challenge is taking control of your own life. Uh, so people want to feel needed, they want to feel useful. That is very important.